एवरीवन आई एम रिया इन माय प्रीवियस सेशन आई टॉक्ड अबाउट स्ट्रक्चरल इक्वेशन मॉडलिंग विद मोर देन वन डायमेंशन फॉर अ कंस्ट्रक्ट दिस सेशन इज इन प्रोग्रेशन टू दैट इफ यू हैव एंड गॉन थ्रू द लास्ट सेशन देन यू माइट फेस सम प्रॉब्लम्स अंडरस्टैंडिंग सर्टेन एब्स्ट्रैक्ट्स फ्रॉम माय लास्ट सेशन दैट आई एंड प्रिया विल यूज इन दिस सेशन नाउ continuing to the current subject of our session where there are multiple constructs it is important to use the correct same method to ensure that the model drawn is accurate this session will also explain how to check if the adopted structural equation model has relationship with multiple constructs to simplify we'll use a case as an example namaste everyone i'm priya and i'm going to accompany you in this session Now we are aware that recently there has been a rise in the social media usage among people of all ages and sexes, especially during the pandemic. Because of this, the objective of many businesses has become to target potential customers on various social media platforms. Although they have a fair understanding of social media, they are not sure of which promotional strategies will work. For example, some potential buyers will value product reviews and feedback over a sales pitch. while others focus on product or service usage recommended by other buyers this pushes businesses to adopt different strategies to acquire customers with different preferences therefore the goal of our case will be to develop a social media promotion strategy to increase customer satisfaction and brand awareness for a small range of cosmetics line furthermore to gain insights I have explored several existing social media promotion strategies used by brands to promote their cosmetic range. I have identified that there are four key dimensions that is entertainment, customization, interaction and electronic word of mouth. These are the most prevalent methods which are used to trigger the interest of their targeted audience. I can choose to follow similar strategies to that of the established brands that Priya explored. but by doing this i won't be able to create a good brand image of my business for repeat sales this is because i'm not sure how the four key dimensions will impact the strategy in our case so i'm going to dig deeper to understand how each dimension will increase the customer satisfaction and brand awareness now that i know which dimension to focus on and what goal to achieve from the study i need data in the form of numbers to test my assumption for this i'm considering to do a survey of randomly selected group of 300 respondents using a structured questionnaire The problem with this consideration is that each of the four dimensions that we have selected cannot be measured numerically because these dimensions are perceptive and they are based on personal preferences. Such dimensions whose values cannot be measured numerically is called latent variables. So I'm going to prepare a set of statement that will represent these dimensions and based on the respondents response I will allocate a numeric value to each of these dimensions. After doing a thorough literature review, I classified the following statements for each dimension. First, interaction can be measured by regular customer feedback collection, disseminating up-to-date information, and availability of customer-relevant content. Second, entertainment is based on attractive video-based ads, number of posts, and behind-the-scenes story. Third, customization can be computed by personalized services. personalized offers and recommendation and lastly electronic word of mouth can be determined by number of referrals customer ratings and shared reviews and promotion of user generated content like blogs tweets facebook and instagram posts such statements that represent the latent variables are called observed variables by now it may look obvious that we have to use a survey based on the adopted dimension which we have found to be relevant in the existing studies but this is not enough for me to start a survey at this stage i want to be very sure that the dimensions we are focusing on are relevant using non relevant dimensions will only complicate the steps further assume i have determined that interaction dimension is not relevant because my brand also position itself as luxury and has a good recognition and recall among its buyers thus i must decide whether to include or not to include the interaction dimension in my analysis however if i don't include interaction dimension and i have removed all the statements all the variables all the error terms related to it then my values changes 
contribution of entertainment will be from 1 to 1.211 customization from 0.986 to 1.152 and electronic word of mouth from 0.759 to 1.350 now let's move on to the goal of our study where the objective is to determine the relevance of each dimension in determining the linkages between each dimension and its impact i had created a survey questionnaire consisting of statements to be collected from 300 random respondents the questionnaire which i made for 300 respondents included statements to measure every dimension using a 5 point likert scale this will help me build a model to define the relationship between the variables Now, as all these statements from the questionnaire are representing the dimensions of only social media strategy, I'm choosing CFA model, that is confirmatory factor analysis model. It is a type of structural equation modeling, and it will help me determine the contribution of each dimension in the social media strategy. The goal here is to determine which dimension is more relevant for the strategy. The analysis is to be based. on four dimensions which are represented by the latent variables these latent variables are further based on the set of statements or the observed variable from the questionnaire accordingly i am assuming that the model to be is social media strategy equal to entertainment plus customization plus interaction and plus electronic word of mouth where entertainment itself is equal to attractive video based ads lots of post and behind the scenes availability customization is personalized service availability plus personalized offers availability plus recommendations availability interaction is regular customer feedback collection plus disseminating up to date information plus availability of customer relevant content electronic word of mouth is referral marketing availability plus customer ratings and reviews sharing facility plus promotion of user generated content Although CFA helps to understand the contribution of each dimension, but there is a possibility of error or bias in the results. Let's assume that the responses have been collected from people who do not have any statistical knowledge. This can result in inconsistencies or mistakes while giving the response. These inconsistencies or mistakes can be due to many reasons, some of which are English may not be the respondent's native language. the questionnaire could be biased because of my personal perceptions for instance if i believe that product customization is a relevant dimension then i will prefer to ask question that will always get a positive response for it and if i believe that word of mouth is not relevant then my question will only attract negative responses towards it another error is that there could be many missing values in the data suppose 100 out of 300 people left one statement in each dimension blank Now this won't give me true value of every dimension. Maybe the respondent hasn't understood the Likert scale. Because of this, he may have meant that he strongly agrees with the statement, but chose one instead of five on the scale by mistake. Scattered and irrelevant statements for a dimension. For instance, I want to measure entertainment, but I ask, do you think radio is a good tool to promote the brand? Although the question is related, but not specifically to entertainment from the digital social media. making any deductions it's a good practice to pre-process the responses many researchers have identified different methods to ascertain the nature of relationship between variables first among them is the reliability of the model reliability test helps us to ascertain that if i collect responses from two different groups of respondents without changing their demographics then would the results for both the groups be same or different second method is the validity of the model for instance let's say i have concluded that more promotional campaigns using ads or posts results in decreasing brand awareness assuming that the campaign message was clear this conclusion contradicts the fundamental purpose of a promotional campaign that is to increase awareness okay, so validity represents how well the results that i have derived from the relationship building is like the real world ideology third method is model fitness once my model is developed i must test the fitness of the model to make sure that the proposed relationships are accurate based on the linkages and will not require any further interventions or the modifications for instance let's say i have proposed a relationship between the dimensions and i want to know whether 
it's accurate or not. I've concluded that 1% rise in an entertainment dimension can result in 0.02% increase in the effectiveness of social media promotion strategy. Now, if I have changed the respondents of my survey from randomly 300 customers to 300 loyal customers, then I must ascertain that the proposed model will still have similar results. That is, rise in entertainment dimension will still result in increasing social media marketing effectiveness. Model changes with the change in data then it depicts that the relation we have identified between the dimensions and the social media strategy is not accurate. In our case, we don't have numeric values for the selected dimensions, so they are being computed as latent variable. Therefore, we have selected construct reliability test to check the reliability of the model. This tests the efficiency of a dimension. To ascertain construct reliability, we must also understand internal consistency and composite reliability. Internal consistency means making sure that the results from these statements are pointing to the same dimension. For example, if I am using ads, posts and behind the scenes information, then they should compute the entertainment dimension only. To measure internal consistency, use the Cronbach's alpha test and it is favorable to accept the result that has more than 0.7 value. Okay, uh, now let's say we test the reliability. Uh, by computing the Cronbach alpha value for each dimension, including all the statements. Okay, so what we are doing here is we are computing the value for each dimension. So we have taken statements for entertainment, EN1, EN2, and EN3, and we have computed its value. Now we are taking uh, the second dimension that is customization, having statements C1, C2, and C3. Thirdly, the interaction variable. And lastly, the electronic word of mouth dimension. Here, we can see that value for each dimension is more than 0.7. Thus, I can ascertain that internal consistency is present. Composite reliability means making sure that all the statements used in the instrument measure the same dimension and that there are no anomalies. So, if I'm measuring the entertainment dimension with three statements, then all those three statements should be enough to measure the dimension. For instance, I should not include any statement in my analysis that has very low contribution in that dimension. That is, composite reliability value should be at least 0.7. For composite reliability, what we do is we open MO's output window, copy the standardized regression based data from the window and paste it in the Excel sheet. Similarly, we function with the variance data. We copy the data from output window and paste it in the Excel sheet. These values for the standardized regression base and the variance was derived by confirmatory factor analysis of observed variable and the latent variables. Once the data is copied, we compute the squared factor loading and 1 minus squared factor loading for like each of the dimension. We know composite reliability is the square of sum of factor loadings for each dimension, that is for customization dimension C1, C2, C3's factor loading square divided by square of sum of factor loadings, that is again C1, C2, C3, uh, C3's factor loading square plus 1 minus squared factor loading sum for each dimension. Since the factor loading value is greater than 0.7 for all the dimensions, thus I can confirm that our model is reliable. Now, validity test helps to verify whether the assumed relationship model is meaningful according to the responses we got and it's not abrupt. As the dimensions are latent variables and are being measured with the help of statements, 
we must make sure that these statements are correctly framed and get the right response as per the assumed model. To measure the efficiency of all dimensions, we will test construct validity. For this, we will also compute convergent validity and discriminant validity. Convergent validity means all the statements that are used to measure a dimension should fall in the same group. Thus, all the statements should converge to represent one single dimension. For instance, when I select three statements to compute the customization dimension, the factor loading of the statement personalized product hamper that I can purchase should have similar values to the other statements like personalized discount that no one gets and source capacity to suggest based on my preferences. If they are different, then they should not be in the customization dimension group. If any one statement's value, suppose personalized product hampers that I can use, is different from the others, then it should not be in that group. Otherwise, it's irrelevant and its presence will only decrease the construct validity value of the customization dimension. This can be determined with the average variance extracted value, which is AVE value, and it should be more than 0.5. In our case, there are three statements to represent each dimension. Suppose a statement that is computing the entertainment dimension has some association or attracts similar responses to that of a statement that computes interaction. This association will reduce the capability of the statement to compute a specific dimension and make the linkage building of the relationship model very challenging. So I will do a discriminant validity test. This will make sure that even though there are multiple statements to measure different dimensions of a construct, they are not duplicated or interpreted in the same way. Now let's compute the discriminant validity on the responses received for our questionnaire. Copy the correlation value of every dimension from the MOS output file to the Excel sheet and rearrange adequately. This also means that the correlation value between the construct should be less than the square root of AVE. After that, compute the square root value of AVE. As this value is less than the correlation values, discriminant validity is not present. Okay, so for better understanding, let's try to put it uh, in another way. Suppose I had a different questionnaire where instead of having second statement of interaction dimension as notification about written policy changes, new product launch, I had instead written as a notification about new video ads. Now with this new questionnaire, I have tested the discriminant validity on the responses of this questionnaire. And I have found that there is a very high correlation in the responses of the statements, attractive video ads of the entertainment dimension and the notification about new video ads of the interaction dimension. This high correlation value means that responses to these statements are very similar. That is of entertainment dimension and of interaction dimension. In this case, I cannot ascertain discriminant validity. Furthermore, this will certainly make my conclusion challenging. Of course, unless you are expecting a high correlation value between any two statements, this presence of high correlation value will mean that there is a bias in the model or in the relationship. To establish the validity of the SEM model, what we do is we first compute the value of average variance extracted. So it's computed by dividing the uh, sum of squared factor lo loadings uh, for the dimension. So for customization, we have taken the square factor loadings for C1, C2 and C3 and divided it with the number of statements used to measure that particular dimension. So in this case, three statements were used for customization. So we have divided it by count of these uh, dimension statements. Average variance extracted, if we simply put it, it's the measure of conversion, uh, convergent validity. So AV defines the variance in the statements, which is represented by the measurement error of the latent variable. In our case, if we see the value of AVE, we can see that for the entertainment, interaction and word of mouth dimension, the value is more than 0.5, which is the required level. But for the customization, the value is less than 0.5, showing that uh, convergent validity is absent.
now that i've determined the reliability and the validity of the model i must test the model fitness this makes sure that the proposed relationships are accurate based on the linkages it is reaffirm that the proposed model does not need any further modifications or interventions in our study we are trying to figure out the contribution of different dimension to the social media marketing strategy i must first understand whether the identified dimension and the respective statements are sufficient or do i have to identify new dimensions and collect new data to modify the linkages of the relationships there are three measures to test model fitness absolute fitness will show if there is any discrepancy in the respondent data or the sample size Incremental fitness will compare the assumed model to the baseline model of the MOS software, but it doesn't represent any relationship between the dimensions. Parsimonious fitness is when MOS modifies the model to suggest a more effective relationship between the constructs. Now, for absolute fitness measures, the CMIN or DF should be less than five. Goodness of fit or GFI and adjusted goodness of fit or AGFI should be more than zero point nine. and root mean square of approximation or rmsea should be less than 0.10 there are four values to measure incremental fitness normal fit index or nfi comparative fit index or cfi tucker lewis index or tli and incremental fit index or ifi each of them should have value of more than 0.9 the parsimonious fitness is measured by parsimony goodness of fit index or pgfi parsimony comparative fit index or pcfi and parsimony normed fit index or pnfi each of them should have a value of more than 0.5 now to assess the model fitness we check all these indices value uh, whether they are fulfilling the required criteria or not so cmi and Um, divided by df is less than five. GFI is uh, GFI, A, AGFI, NFI, CFI, TLI, and IFI uh, value is more than zero point nine. RMSEA value is less than zero point one zero, and PGFI, PCFI, and PNFI is more than zero point five. Even though our proposed model is reliable and fit, it has uh, like fulfilled all the criteria, but it is not valid. so i need to make changes to the data sets uh, in order to get the validity right to uh, so that i can make accurate decision for the social media promotion strategy